Hi all, thank you for uh, joining me on time. Uh, please allow us a couple of more minutes before we start. Hi all, a very good afternoon and uh, welcome to the webinar. Uh, the series Stay Safe, Rethinking Security to Mitigate Risk has been specially designed uh, for senior leaders like you. Uh, today's session is brought to you by Iraj in association with NTT NetMagic. Before I proceed further, I would take the liberty to introduce our speakers. We have Mr. Rishikesh Kamath, VP Managed Security Business with NTT NetMagic and Mr. Kaushal Mehta, Head Iraj. Before I pass control to Mr. Kamath, I would want to talk about some house rules. All participants are on mute by default and moderators who is me will help drive the uh, conversation by passing necessary controls to the speaker. There is a dedicated time allotted for Q&A. Please post your question in the Q&A window and we will happy to address that. Uh, in case any question remains unanswered owing to time, same will be uh, answered via, via an email. So here I would request Mr. Kamath uh, to come in and share his perspective. Thank you, Pritesh. Very good afternoon to everyone. Let me just show a few things. Okay, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, it is. Okay, great. Uh, so before we get into the details of uh, the uh, discussion with uh, Kaushal from Miraj, I just wanted to take you through a couple of slides and uh, set the context. So I'm sorry. Just give me a minute. Okay. So um, we all know that digital transformation today is driving change, right? In terms of the evolution of people, process, and technology, in terms of the new markets that are now becoming accessible to us, and at the same time, new competitors that are coming in and leveraging these digital technologies, the new business models that digital is uh, really uh, spanning out, right? So um, there are a lot of opportunities and there with those opportunities in the digital world there are a lot of challenges as well and um, we as organizations now need to uh, meet uh, customers expectations which have changed drastically um, over the past few decades uh, so what does all of this mean so NTT runs a global threat intelligence report every year. And um, these are some of the key findings of the 2020 uh, report uh, that um, was published some time back. So the first finding was that adversaries continue to innovate, which means that uh, they are not stopping at um, the um, age old ways of doing things. In fact, they are using a lot of machine learning and artificial intelligence into their own uh, methods to uh, launch new attacks and to stay undetected. Uh, they are also now attacking the IoT landscape. Uh, so as the adoption of IoT increases, there's a lot of weaponization that's happening through the IoT uh, technologies. And uh, the compliance landscape continues to grow. Uh, so from that perspective, GRC continues to become complex. 
Uh, so uh, organizations, especially global organizations, now need to be cognizant of and be compliant to the rules and regulations within their home country, as well as to rules and regulations in the country in which they operate. Right. So that has become a more complex uh, task now. And um, at the same time, old vulnerabilities still remain a prime target. So um, most of the, uh, in fact, um, uh, widely publicized uh, 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 vulnerabilities like Poodle and Heartbleed, they still continue to be uh, op uh, available to attackers to exploit, right? I mean, that is where uh, many customers have either not patched their systems correctly or they've completely forgotten about it or maybe they don't even know that their, 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 that systems exist in their environment with those uh, vulnerabilities, right? So all vulnerabilities continue to remain a prime target and uh, it's, it's also because they are the easy ones. Um, rather than spending time and effort in developing uh, new zero-day attacks, uh, the, the uh, attackers find it more lucrative to leverage um, existing technologies and existing vulnerabilities in technologies. Content management systems are heavily targeted. Uh, again, this is uh, you know coming directly from the growth of digital assets that we have seen and an increase in uh, CMS deployment and uh, usage by customers, both large and small. So CMS systems continue to be heavily targeted. And uh, from a technology perspective, technology industry uh, unfortunately leads the uh, attack industries. Uh, the logic to that, of course, is um, uh, uh, you know uh, straightforward because technology now becomes the um, inroad for um, attackers to uh, launch attacks on uh, their end customers. So uh, if they are able to embed the um, vulnerabilities, if they're able to embed attacks within uh, the technology products, uh, that gives them a much better um, foothold into the end customer's uh, landscape. So defenders have their hands full in keeping their assets safe. And at the same time, they need to be complying with uh, all regulations. So that's the kind of landscape that we are today working with. So there are some key recommendations basis this key uh, basis this findings. The first one is um, an intelligence driven security. So it needs to be a more proactive approach. Um, it needs to be able to address the level of complexity that technology has today, and it needs to have the right level of threat intelligence capabilities. So this is where uh, customers um, need to look at leveraging next generation tools that use machine learning models that use artificial intelligence models to be able to track and detect um, the even the minute um, uh, level of attacks, the ones that would typically um, go under the radar or the ones that would generally keep changing uh, form. So that is uh, what, what, what entity means by intelligence driven security. Uh, then there is continuous monitoring. So uh, firstly, one needs to have a comprehensive visibility in terms of uh, what the existing setup is um, and the threat landscape or the attack uh, surface uh, for the uh, current environment um, of an organization. Uh, that's the internal perspective. They also need to think about the external environment because a lot of phishing, a lot of spams, a lot of uh, spoofing uh, of uh, of your digital infrastructure would happen outside of your environment, right? So monitoring the external environment and integrating um, the operations between infrastructure teams, application teams, and uh, security teams is of paramount importance now because working in silos does not really lead to a better security posture. Secure by design. So uh, this needs to be the security which is aligned to business requirements. It needs to be security that is agile to change, and it needs to be security that is able to provide an automated response to alerts and events and incidents that take place within the organization. And finally, controls standardization. So this is where organizations should look at adopting new frameworks uh, and best practices. Uh, so good examples of this are the NIST uh, framework or the um, MITRE attack framework, right? These are ones that organizations can adopt to be able to uh, provide a much more uh, scientific or a reputable response to attacks, right? So uh, 
standardization is now becoming very important uh, for for organizations so that's that's some of the key recommendations uh, from the ntd report and finally looking beyond so what lies beyond is the evolution of sophistication of malware capabilities so uh, like i said malware authors continue to leverage um, ai and ml technologies most uh, malware uh, authors probably don't change their code so often but the uh, current malware capabilities itself or the malware um, code itself gets uh, repurposed in multiple ways um, in which because of which we end up with a million uh, different varieties of uh, malware okay um, additional reconnaissance compromise and propagation of iot botnets is on the cards uh, so that is where organizations need to make sure that uh, their IoT deployments are secure. Um, there will be a continued deployment of spyware and key loggers. Um, so a, a lot will depend on how well organizations are able to detect and protect their endpoints. Uh, the uh, attackers' efforts in automation of attacks and use of machine learning and AI by the threat actors. So these are uh, the things that we will see going forward. And basically what all of this means is that uh, the task of defenders such as yourselves is going to become more and more uh, difficult. And so when that happens, uh, you need to have the right kind of solutions in place. You need to have the right kind of strategies in place. And there should be solutions that make your life simple. There should be solutions that do not add further to the complexity of uh, the existing solutions or technologies or environment that you have and be able to uh, provide you with a good leverage to uh, start defending against uh, the bad guys. Uh, so with that perspective in mind, today we have uh, Kaushal from Iraj. And um, while I will let him speak uh, directly about uh, the capabilities of Iraj and um, you know what the solution is all about, uh, the uh, fact is uh, it's a solution that is uh, something which is um, you know, really uh, easy to use. It uh, provides uh, uh, the right level of compliance to uh, organizations, and uh, you know it, it does so without adding any further complexity to your environment, right? Uh, so, hi Kaushal, good afternoon. So, uh, Kaushal, let, uh, you know I just want to kind of ask you a few questions, and um, maybe you could. Um, you know, provide us some inputs around that. Like, for example, uh, can you help us understand the problem that your solution um, uh, solves, right? That your uh, technology solves. Uh, how does it benefit customers? Uh, what are the key capabilities this solution provides? Uh, can right. you run us through a typical deployment architecture? Right. Also, we would like to know what kind of or what size of typical deployments has Iraj done, and uh, you know, finally, which verticals have you typically deployed your solution in? So uh, it would really help uh, the audience if you can touch upon these points. And uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Rishi. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Kaushal Mehta from Miraj. Uh, what I'm planning to do over the next 30 minutes is to walk you through a slide deck and give you an idea of the solution. Uh, alternate, you know, after, and that will be the first 15 minutes. Next 15 minutes, I try to uh, give you a view of the solution in terms of a demo of the solution. And I'll try and cover all the questions that uh, Rishi has raised in terms of what is what is the problem statement, what problem does it solve, how does the solution benefit the customers, who are the key stakeholders, how does it, uh, you know, what kind of deployments have we done, and so on. So, so then, what what does a typical architecture look like? So, having said that, I'll just get into my slides. Um, I hope my screen is uh, visible. So, let's look at the current data center environment. How is your current setup? How does your current setup look like without a privilege identity in access manual? Uh, you have a data center assets from ranging from server to databases, routers, which is firewalls, your thick clients, your thin clients, your storage, your cloud, uh, and uh, whatever applications you have. So this is the current environment that you have, you know, your enterprise assets that you have. And you have a set of admin users, the so-called privilege users who are accessing those envi this environment directly through either RDP, SSH, or tell, tell that is not their browser, client, or you know, a remote method to log in. Now, this is your current environment. Now, what are the current challenges in this kind of an environment? You have a host of uh, you know, super user accounts managing this kind of environment, and these are directly logging into these devices. The kind of 
uh, actions that they can do, you know, which may go untraced at times is, you know, you can run programs, you can change security settings, you can modify DB records, you can delete data, you can, you know, change the config settings and so on. So these are critical super user accounts, very powerful accounts in nature, and they have full rights on the target systems. And uh, they have uncontrolled access to systems and they, they can do a lot of things. The challenge lies in trying to figure out who has done what. If an incident happens, most of the times customers struggle to figure out who has done what. And that's where the problem comes in. How do you get visibility and control on your environment? Now, what are the challenges in this kind of an open environment? You, you obviously have you know issues with identity and access governance, who came in, who came out, and what all they did in your environment, where you know how, since Passwords have to be shared. It's a big risk for the organization. Role-based access is an issue. Uh, you know, you don't get centralized logs, untempered logs. People have full access to the systems. They can delete the logs. They can switch off the logs and do whatever they want and come out. There are audits and compliance issues. Obviously, there's a big uh, insider threat in terms of who has done what and uh, bigger challenges are your governance risk and compliance, compliance with regulatory requirements and industry best practices. Now, what does Iraj offer? in terms of features and functionalities to address this problem. The problem I'll summarize again is of identity and access governance. The problem is of getting visibility and control on your environment. And the problem is trying to improve your governance risk and compliance. How do you manage your GRC? Now, Iraj as a solution, Iraj PAM, Iraj Privilege Identity and Access Management solution. Uh, the key features of that uh, solution, you know, uh, are summarized on this slide. Uh, starting with multi-factor authentication, that's the need of an hour. That's the first level of defense for any organization. Identity thefts, you know, from 90% of the internal frauds that happen. And the most important thing is to ensure that you have one added layer of uh, authentication before a, a user is, you know, authenticated on the system. So multi-factor authentication plays a key role. Then comes single sign-on. Uh, then comes role-based access. After you log in securely into the portal with uh, second factor option, you, uh, you you will see only your set of devices, you will not see anything else, uh, and which is role-based access, and then single sign-on to all your targets. Uh, Iraj is probably the only company that gives you single sign-on out of the box without any API connectors or directors. You can connect to all your assets out of the box. No APIs, no connectors, no adapters. Then comes, your, you know, once you've logged in, You've got access to your systems. Everything is live to the super admin. Everything is live in the PAM solution. <coughs> Excuse me. You can take a remote. You can take, you can see a live session of people uh, logged into your data centers. You can terminate them. You can take control of the session. And once these sessions are recorded, you can replay those sessions. You can do text search within videos. Uh, so if you have say a few hundred thousand videos or session recordings over the, or a month or two months. You can do tech search within that and you know, type in a command called sudo and find out which session, <coughs> which user has done sudo and uh, directly go to that video at that point and you can play the video directly from there. So that gives you forensics in terms of who has done what much faster than other solutions. Then your dis discovery capabilities in terms of discovering hidden admin accounts, hidden devices and active ports available on the target device. Now this is granular in terms, and it is, and this entire solution is agentless. So what we're talking is a quicker deployment and ability to discover things inside the system. On runtime, you get security alerts, a host of alerts are available in terms of, you know, somebody doing change passwords to the system, opening passwords, doing the maker checker approvals, uh, you know, mark, you know, if a device is sensitive, you can get marked as sensitive. You can get an alert. If you mark some sensitive commands, you can get alert on sensitive commands. Uh, and the most important one is, in case if somebody bypasses the PAM solution, it tries to log in directly to the servers, whether it's Windows, Linux, Unix, AX, the solution will send out an alert. Now that's something that no other solution has. Uh, then we're talking about Sync Center. Its ability to, you know, sync your passwords on the target. Uh, with with the password that is in the vault, and it keeps uh, you know you can keep scanning and checking whether the password is in sync. And if it is out of sync, you can go and reset the password as well. And for the executives, you have a four blocker that gives you a live a view of what's going on in your data center. The first block has live users, second block is live uh, devices, third block is live commands, and fourth block is live CPU storage memory of uh, monitoring of the solution. 
So this word blocker view is essentially a summary for the CXO and a live summary in terms of what's going on in the data center. And finally, you're looking at reporting and analytics, you're looking at compliance reporting, you know, and reporting for your audit requirements. And if you want to do uh, analytics and integrate with the BI solution, downstream BI solution, you can do that as well. So this is how, you know, these are the key features that help you monitor and control your privileged users in, through the Iraj PAM solution. Now I'll I'll take a minute uh, and explain and, and spend a minute on this multi-factor authentication. This is critical to security. We have the most exhaustive second factor options available to choose from. Uh, the first factor being the AD authentication. The second factor is the choice that the customer can provide to their users. It could be from SMS OTP, email OTP, to biometrics, to an app-based authentication like Google, Microsoft, or any time-based OTP apps. Then it could be any hard tokens like PKI, uh, sorry, uh, Vasco, or RSA. You can also give a signature-based second factor option with PKI tokens. You can do Cisco Duo. We've added Twilio. We've added Interest. So a host of second factor options to choose from, and it is unparalleled. The set of second factor options that we offer is unparalleled. Then, uh, you know, coming to the question that Rishi had asked earlier, uh, what's a typical solution architecture look like? What would be a physical deployment architecture look like? Uh, essentially, there are two layers. One is the application layer and one is the vault layer. Um, uh, this, the simplest architecture would be a two box, two box solution. This, this entire, both these layers could be in one box and a redundant set of that would be in a second box. So this uh, could be the simplest architecture, could be a simple two box architecture with one box being the failover for the other. Uh, as we scale and as we improve uh, security, we can separate the layers of you know, application and the vault and make it two boxes and have two redundant boxes for failover. If you want you want to go horizontal scaling, you can go for a site outage or a country outage with the DR of the spam solution. Uh, and if you want to horizontal scale, you can put these multiple applications behind a load balancer and do load balancing and make it active active as well. So depending on what kind of infrastructure, what kind of requirement you have, this solution can scale from two boxes to n boxes. And most probably your four boxes is sufficient for most, most kind of implementations. If you are an extremely large uh, enterprise customer with thousands of privileged users, like a bank or a, you know, a large data center, then obviously you can have three or four nodes running in parallel uh, and you can do load balancing to ensure that you can support thousands of users and millions of devices. Uh, the logical architecture, uh, as we see it, is uh, on the screen where a set of users coming from different parts of the world uh, can access the PAM solution uh, through a VPN access. If they are coming from remote, if they are within the network, they will just straight away go to the URL of the PAM solution, log into the PAM with an AD authentication, and then choosing the second factor option. You get a set of devices to view. Uh, you double click on that, password is fetched from the world, session proxy is created, and you get single sign on to all your assets. You're talking about single sign to your, all your servers, any, all your workstations, including workstations, your databases, your network, routers, which is firewalls, your cloud infrastructure, including your applications. It could be your homegrown applications, it could be third party applications, it could be SAP O365. Uh, what have you? So that's that's the kind of uh, you know logical flow of information that happens. Login, sing, you know, authentication, authorization, then you know proxy session proxy single sign on and access to all your infrastructure and BAU in terms of what you're doing through directly now doing through the PAM solution. So what are the key capabilities that we are offering? Is your AD integration on the fly, your multi-factor authentication, role-based access, and time-based access on this part. On the second part, you get command restrictions on your Linux, Unix, AX environment, including your Windows environment now, session recording, discovery capabilities, and on runtime, you're looking at real-time alerts with integration with any uh, with REST APIs, any SIM uh, can be integrated. If you have, uh, to, uh, you know, seems like Curator or McAfee that do not have REST APIs, we can still integrate with creating table views for your SIEM to pull data from. Your scheduled reports are there, and and then you are talking about as single sign-on to all your assets. So that's that's the kind of logical architecture that we are talking about. If I have to summarize this and tell you what the solution offers to customers, we've broken down our capabilities into six buckets: manage, monitor, control, your privilege 
privileged users and you can discover compliance, secure your privileged accounts. So th these are the six capabilities. Now, if I have to drill this down further in terms of what the six buckets look like, you know, it, this is how it looks like. You're looking at AD integration on the fly, no AD ID to be created for Iraj, no, uh, no agents to be deployed anywhere, no copying of your AD, it is just AD integration on the fly. We're talking about single sign-on to all your assets without any connectors or adapters. We are talking about role-based access and multi-factor authentication. We are talking single sign-on to all your applications and time-based access on all the devices as well as on the portal, bank portal. So this is your managed capability in terms of monitoring, exciting capabilities in terms of live session viewing, live termination. You can do text search within videos. You can do SIM integration and you can get bypass alerts. Now, this is unique to us. You can get, this is uh, not there in other solutions. We are talking about control. This is the most important uh, you know, part of this kind of solution, this category of solution. Uh, you need solid control on the privileged users, privileged accounts that you're managing. You're talking about real-time application security, your real-time security alerts. We're talking about command restrictions on Linux, Unix, Windows, uh, Linux, Unix, AX, and some service environment, your SSH, basically you can also get command restrictions so you, on your network devices being accessed through SSH. You're talking about alerts on remote login to Windows. Now, these two capabilities are new to the market. Uh, we call it new to the world capabilities. Uh, we, we you know, you know, this is our innovation, sure innovation. Here, uh, this, these capabilities, uh, let me talk about the first one, the alerts on remote login to Windows. When if you are aware, uh, there are many ways to log into Windows. The standard way in which everybody logs in is through MSTSC or RDP, but there are many stealth ways in which you can log in. A typical stealth way to log in would be a WMI access, uh, uh, PS Execute access, a PowerShell access, or an RPC tool uh, using an RPC tool or you know a shared network drives. So these are the ways in which you can log into Windows without an interactive login, without the username password. And these are still the ways in which you can get into Windows. Now, in case if you know a user comes in and tries to log in through these stealth, one of these stealth ways, Viraj Pam will send out an alert to the security saying that this ID has been used to access this device using this method, the remote method. This is stealth capability. This is first in the world and nobody else has this capability. We are talking about restrictions on windows you know most of the solutions have been talking restrictions in linux unix ax ssh uh, and uh, that to agent base we are talking uh, you know restrictions on windows now now windows restriction is very critical because you can do segregation of duties apart from you know the base level of id segregation for example you're given access to an ad uh, uh, to a person with admin access on a Windows device, and you can still restrict that person from doing a shutdown, a command prompt, uh, you know, opening uh, a control panel, or restricting the person from doing DSA or MSC, or restricting the person to going to access your AD from that. So all that is available in a template. You can apply the template, full template, to the user, or you can apply selective controls to the template to the users, and go in for deep segregation of duties. Now these are these two are extremely granular controls on your systems and on the discovery uh, you know you, you have discovering hidden admin accounts hidden devices you can discover active ports on the compliance you get scheduled reports compliance reports you can integrate with bi solutions and on the security part this is very important to understand and this is sensitive completely hardened os others also give now pam os changes every hour os password changes every hour and no access to pam solution 21 now these two uh, drive the core of secure code of code of security of the solution. You do not have access to the PAM OS. Super admin does not have access. Nobody has access to it. And because of which your logs and your recordings are sec uh, secure. You cannot delete your logs and recordings. Now, this is critical to security. And this is where we differentiate. If you're looking at this slide, this, the things that are highlighted in red are the ones that are our differentiators that differentiate our solution compared to that solution. I'll talk about that separately. Uh, the benefits of PAM, uh, <clears throat> we are talking about identity and access governance, uh, who came in, who came out, what all activities they did, and it is transparent to the organization as a process. We are talking manage, monitor, and control privilege users, get full visibility and control on who did what <clears throat> or who is doing what live. You can prevent internal frauds because you know the propensity of fraud goes down if everything is monitored and controlled. And then we're talking about improved governance, risk, and compliance. This is where your management is going to be happy that you have taken your security to the next level. 
And what are the stakeholders? Who are the stakeholders for such kind of a solution? On the first level, you're talking operations. You're talking about people, admins who are, taking, who are doing direct accesses right now, going to the solution. They want seamless access to their devices. They want to be able to do RDP to the servers. They want to do you know, file transfers. They want to do X manager. They want to get GUI access of their servers. They want, so all that seamless access to your uh, infrastructure has to be done, has to be available. This is the first set of people who you know, will sign off as users saying that this solution works for us. Then from a security perspective, talking about, uh, you know, getting visibility on control, you're getting your security controls in place, you're getting your command restrictions. Once the operation says this is this works for us, the security comes in and says, let's tighten the controls, let's ensure the governance is in place. Uh, the, the compliance team comes in, talks about standard, you know, best practices, you know, compliance to regulatory requirements, compliance to standards. You know, PCI, SOX, BASL, HIPAA, ISO 27000, what I mean, irrespective of your geography, you would have, uh, you know, standards to comply to, and this solution meets all those compliance requirements. And then we are talking from a management perspective, simplified audits, uh, better compliance and improving overall governance risk and compliance of the organization. So these are some of the benefits that the stakeholders from a presence, uh, our solution is deployed virtually in most of the verticals, key verticals of the industries, you know, whether it, you call it banking, financial service, insurance, BFSI, you talk about healthcare, you talk about media, uh, defense, legal, you know, energy and oil and gas, energy utilities, IPOs, BPOs, KPOs, uh, sorry, BPOs, KPOs, IT, IDS, FMCG, retail, across the verticals we are there. Uh, some of the largest set of, you know, customer, you know, conglomerates are using our, our solution, whether it is the Tata Group in in form of Chroma retail, whether it's the Billa Group in terms of fashion, already Billa fashion retail, uh, your uh, pantaloon fashions or more retail, uh, and 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 uh, you know uh, Godrej, the entire Godrej Industries Group is using our solution. Godrej itself has 23 odd companies using our solution. Then we are talking Times of India Group, which is ex again the largest media house in Asia that is using our solution across its group companies. Then we're talking LNT. LNT is again a $17 billion conglomerate across their entities. Uh, we are using, uh, they have deployed a solution. Uh, and, you know, you can go on, but broadly banks, mutual funds, insurance, uh, large mutual funds from UTI, HDFC, LNT mutual fund to union mutual fund, all of these people are using our Iraq, using our solution to manage their identity and, and access the accesses. And finally, a quick slide before I get, uh, get into my demo is, uh, you know, why Raj? Uh, after all, there are so many PAM solutions available in the market. Why Raj? We are a proven product. We've been in the industry for the last 20 years. Since 15 years, we've been focused on enterprise PAM solution. Uh, there are multiple generations of PAM solution that has come out and are working successfully in the industry. Better support. This is a mission critical business and this needs real time support. Uh, most of these, you know, products have uh, large uh, turnaround times, large response times, and you know they have to go to the OEM. The OEM takes so much time to respond. You have to log a ticket, and only qualified engineers can take support and all that. Here, the support is instant with the OEM, and this is where a big differentiator comes in when it comes to running your data centers. We are talking about continuous innovations. We are talking about secure and scalable architecture. We brought in capabilities which are new to the world. Again, we have come up with two new capabilities that are new to the market as well. And the solution roadmap is also exciting. So having said that, this is where I would like to end my presentation, get into the demo. I'll take a minute, you know, take half a minute break for any questions or else I can continue with my demo. Oh, thanks, Koshal. I think we can do the demo and we are anyways taking the questions on the chat. Uh, they're going to the administrator, so we can continue with the Sure, Rishi. Uh, you can see my screen with the demo screen. Product demo screen. Yeah. Okay. So th this is your uh, product screen. Uh, you come through a URL. You put in your username credential, which is your AD authentication. Then you, this is multi-domain integration, so you can integrate uh, with your domain or Iraj domain, or if you have group companies, subsidiaries, you can integrate them out of the box without 
doing separate implementations for them. Then we are talking multi-factor authentication on the right. So I'll just start the demo and you know walk you through this uh, you know session, which is basically a user experience captured through this demo. So this is your any authentication. These are the two factor options you can choose from. So let's say I am choosing Google Authenticator. The code, the code comes on my phone, which is registered with the application. I'll put in the code and I'll get into the application. This is your seamless single sign on, a smooth single, you know, login to the application with second factor option. Now, all your assets, which are your router switches, firewalls, database, everything goes behind two factor once the person comes in through the two factor on the portal. So this secures your environment, gives you first level of defense. Now you see 10 dashboards. This first dashboard is for the users. This is for the PAM admin, and these eight dashboards are for the super admins. Uh, idea is whatever the super admin has to do is also through this GUI only, no access to the OS at all. Now let's say I am a user, I want to access my systems. I click on it, I log into this application, it opens up. So it shows you last login. Now this is all role-based. I am uh, I see AIX group uh, for uh, AIX group, and I can see only AIX devices. I can't do anything else. And these are the only two devices that are given to me. I double click, I get single sign-on to my assets. And every you know it's seamless single sign-on. You double click and you get access to your systems. Now this is how seamless you can get access to your assets. This is five answers. You can do right click and you do single sign-on to your uh, you know, you can do file transfers, seamless file transfers. Then we are talking about, uh, let me show you a network, a Linux device. So let's uh, look at a Linux device now after the X. I double click again, seamless single sign on, double click and you get access to your uh, devices. You can uh, do and right click and open WinSCP or you can do single, you know, single sign on to your GUI as well, which is X manager. Most of the solutions struggle in terms of giving single sign-on to X-Manager, X-Ming kind of products. This gives you single, seamless single sign-on to your GUI devices as well. And no separate settings to be done, nothing to be done, no connectors to be built. It's all out of the box. We are talking single sign-on to your, you know, your Linux, Unix, AX devices. You can switch between tabs and take multiple sessions, multiple sessions. Uh, and there's no limit in terms of number of sessions you can take. Everything is single sign-on. So let me show you some other devices. Let me show you uh, a network device. So I double-click on that network device and I get access to it. These are this is the single 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 sign-on to your SAN switches, your your router switches. Let me show you some other SAN. So yeah, so this was a, this is a switch, and you can see how seamless single sign-on you get onto this. And uh, you know, to to some you know, to, uh, to customers who are using TechX, this is not a replacement of TechX. It can complement TechX by either you know integrating with TechX, or you can make TechX redundant and use the solution to go and access your systems. TechX is old. TechX does AAA. This goes beyond AAA. So if if you're looking at retaining your TechX, you can do that. You, if you want to remove TechX and use this, you can do that as well for your network devices. This was single sign-on to your Windows device. I showed you Linux, Unix. I'm showing you a couple of flavors of each device so they get an idea of how single, single single sign-on works. And it is as simple as just a double click and you get access to your systems. Then you, whatever you're doing is video recorded and everything is via you. This. Uh, let me show you a couple of other uh, tools as well. Uh, so let me show you a database. You know, a lot of customers have these databases, SQL Studios, uh, your Toad, your SQL Developer, all that you can get single sign-on to. So it will open the SQL Management Studio and put in the credentials and log you in. So this is single sign-on to your da databases as well. And then we're talking about you know, accessing your uh, devices through. So this is an example of a putty device access to single sign-on. Uh, VMware device, you know, if you want to put in your consoles, uh, VM console behind the PM, uh, PAM solution, you can do that. The software will log you in. This is what the software does to log you in. You don't have to do anything. 
and and i can go on the idea is you can get seamless single sign on to all your assets and i have shown you a bunch of flavors uh, the next level of complexity comes in browser consoles you want access uh, a single sign on to all your browser consoles and this is where the solution will give you single sign on to your browser consoles as well this is the storage client it's seamlessly access to single sign on and uh, your browser consoles in terms of you know storage devices your security devices your firewalls so this these are some of some of these flavors i'm showing you now these are flavors uh, in terms of uh, enable single sign on this is how seamless you get everything that you are doing on the tenable devices single sign on i was told by some other products do not have ready made adapters to these devices you would wait for 6 months few years to for that product company to come up with a connector to build those devices i was told in one of the leading solutions took 6 years to come up with a single sign on to fortinet firewall and and we have been giving single sign on to any device out of the box since last 6 years so so that's how you know advance the technologies that's how seamless and easy to use the technology is uh and having said that you know i just have last few uh, you know uh set of devices to show uh, you know customers today are talking social media and uh, the corporate social media accounts are also integrated out of the box you can see facebook single sign on you can see gets you know instagram you can get you know your twitter what have you all single sign on out of the box now these are dummy connections just to give you to show you the concept how seamless single sign on works on these devices and uh, this was developed for a retail customer who had uh, you know uh, social media accounts and they they promote their products through social media and there are agents who are pushing content through the social media to push uh, you know their capabilities to push the you know advertise their products on through social media and they wanted to get visibility in terms of what these people are doing on the social media platform as well so this is how seamless you get access to your social media accounts also through the pan solution and everything is video recorded everything is tracked monitored and controlled through this environment now i am almost done with my demo if this was just a peak view in terms of and, and give you a user experience and how the solution works and how the solution you know is easy i'll take a couple of questions and that will help us uh, you know give you some more insight into the solution so over to rishi and team in k and and to the external people who want to ask questions yeah thank you kaushal i think that was a great demo and um, the points that i could uh, see from that is it has a lot of integrations with existing technologies that any customer would typically have it is fairly straight forward to use and um, implement so the cost of actually uh, maintaining the solution is hardly um, you know anything uh, and and i think you also said that uh, the support is given by uh, by iraj uh, directly right so uh, you know from all of those perspective i think um, this is a solution that would make the life of uh, compliance managers the, the life of cso's much more simpler um in terms of both staying secure and in terms of uh, staying compliant right so right. thanks once again uh, for that yeah just one so, point that i would like to mention rishi just one second i wanted to answer your questions okay. around replacing cyber arc replacing you know what are the key differentiators uh, that we bring uh, can i just put one slide one last slide before so that i can walk you know i can just give an idea around the, uh, yeah just one second just one second yeah so you can see my screen now there, there there was a there was a question around what are the key differentiators technical differentiators in our solution versus other solution especially cyber arc the tech cortex uh, beyond trust and all those solutions that are that are talking about the you know that are talking about the privilege identity and access management now single sign on to all devices out of the box no apis no connectors and adapters we are the only company possible in the world that gives you single sign on out of the box uh these two next i u r a and i w a r i uh, these are two innovations from us uh, this is first of its kind capabilities unauthorized access alert for remote login on to windows we are talking about the next one i war 
uh, Iran's Windows Advanced restrictions for granular restrictions on Windows for better segregation of duties. This is the most advanced restrictions available on Windows. Then we are talking about IDLP, ability to prevent data copy from your you know, desktop to your servers and vice versa. And uh, doing third factor authentication on the target devices, two factor on the portal and third on the target devices. The most exhaustive two factor options available in the market. We're talking about text search within videos and we're talking zero trust security. So those are the key things that we bring on board unlike any other PAM solution in the market. And that's where our strength lies. Our typical deployments are two to three weeks. We take bets with customers in terms of deploying the solution in four weeks flat across across any enterprise, uh, across any size of our organization. Uh, recently, we've been, you know, uh, there are a lot of queries that have come in terms of replacing CyberArk and the likes of that kind of solution beyond trust. Uh, there is one customer, active customer in Indonesia looking for replacing uh, Dell TPAM. Uh, and we, we've committed them, you know, uh, to replace the entire solution in three to four weeks. So that's the kind of quick deployments and timelines that we're looking at from the day go. So, so having said that, I will pass it back to you, Rishi. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Thanks once again, uh, Kaushal. So uh, with that, um, we would like to open the floor for questions. So if you have not already asked uh, the questions in the administrator's chat window, please do uh, put up those uh, questions. So uh, uh, Rishi and Kaushal, thank you. So uh, I have uh, a couple of questions uh, uh, with me already been posted. So one of the question is the uh, how long does it typically take to deploy this solution? What are the dependency on the customer? Yeah. Okay. So typically this solution takes two weeks to deploy, uh, and how and, and the prerequisites uh, are important for us to be ready with. We give a set of prerequisites to the customer in terms of hardware, in terms of uh, the VMs that we need, in terms of the port openings that we need, in terms of data that they need to keep ready to integrate their servers, router switches, firewalls. So once the prerequisites are ready, uh, our day count starts, day zero, day one starts, and within two weeks, roughly two weeks, we kind of integrate, deploy the solution and integrate all their assets. Uh, and whatever capabilities I showed you on the screen are available within two to three weeks of time. Now, the challenge comes in where the customer data is not ready, customer infra is not ready, customer ports are not open, that's where the cycle gets delayed and obviously you know uh, the sign off takes two to three weeks more because they want to test the solution they want to see the solution live working seamlessly for a couple of weeks before the sign off so deployment go live two to three weeks and three weeks four weeks to ensure that they are comfortable and com completely ready to go live sure so, yeah so, uh... The uh, other question which you, uh, which I have is, can you replace an existing PEM solution like CyberArk and within what timeline? Yeah, so CyberArk, there's a false notion that CyberArk is huge and CyberArk, you know, uh, is, is, is heavy and, you know, it's difficult to replace and all that. We take bets on replacing CyberArk within four weeks. Within four weeks flat, we will we'll, we'll give you all the key capabilities that our solution offers that will give you the basic identity and access governance and compliance requirements of your organization. Then uh, additional, maybe three, four weeks if there are any customizations, uh, which are specific that are done in your environment. So broadly four weeks flat, we can replace CyberArk and then phase two of enhancements or uh, customizations take another two to four weeks. That's how fast we can do replacement of uh, CyberArk. Okay, and uh, uh, there is one question which you have already answered, but if you would uh, want to elaborate uh, more on it, how do you differentiate this solution compared to other products like CyberArk, Beyond Trust, and Correct. Uh, Correct, correct. So let me uh, just you know take a overview on how do we differentiate. What are the key you know key things that we bring which is different than the rest of the you know product set that are that's there in the market. For you know, if you look at this category, we break it down into three parts. The first part is ability to you know to uh, get all users on onto the solution, ability to integrate all your assets, ability to rotate passwords, and ability to detect if somebody bypasses the PAM solution. So if if I look at it in terms of these three categories, these three you know areas, 
we are the only company that allows you to integrate all assets out of the box single sign on to all so that's something that's a big differentiator for us where others are not able to uh, onboard certain set of devices because they don't have ready made connectors or adapters so that's the first ability to ensure that you can see any session live terminate those sessions you know do text search within videos and get visibility in terms of live environment is unique to us we give a ci cockpit a four docker view which is unique to us and then in case if somebody still bypasses the pam solution goes directly we will send you an alert no no other pam solution can do that the alerting that we can do in terms of bypasses so those are the broad three areas that we you know kind of differentiate on while the technical uh, differentiators i already mentioned in terms of you know bringing capabilities on windows restriction bringing capabilities on remote access alerts bringing uh, capabilities on text search within videos doing single sign on out of the box and uh, you know giving you rest api integration for all your uh, sim integration so those those are the key things that we bring on board which is unique to us and which is way deep uh, in terms of security than those you know other products that we talked about sure and there is uh, there is one question uh, also where the recordings will be saved is it client side or the customer side so the recording uh, happens within the solution uh, and uh, it's securely uh, stored in the solution and after a period of time uh, based on your schedule you can you know move the session recordings into a shared folder uh in sorry in the map drive and then from there you can back it up on sano tape so idea is if you have retention policies of one year then one year of video recording will be there online within the box within the pam solution and after that it's moved into your map drive from where you can back it up on sano tape so it's stored securely even when you take out the videos you cannot play the videos uh, directly you have to bring it into the pam solution and play it because anybody can take the data or once the data is out anybody can take it and you know and sell it or do something with that data so that data is still secure once you, even after it's been taken out sure so uh, these were the questions uh, i had in the window uh, with me so uh, uh, mr rishi would you want to add uh, something uh, on top of what uh, kaushal has uh, just said so i think um, you know we really uh, got some good questions from the audience and um, if they if there are more questions we can take them now or uh, we could um, you know always um, have some uh, have the audience reach out to us at uh, marketing at netmagicsolutions.com so if you have any further questions or if you would like to engage and if you would like to do a poc of the solution uh, do reach out to us the address is uh, marketing at netmagicsolutions.com um ritesh do we have any further questions from any of the attendees no these were the questions these were the only questions we had Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sorry. Yeah. So. Uh, so with this, uh, we come to the end of the session, and I thank you very much, um, Mr. Rishikesh and Mr. Kaushal, to share their perspective on the subject. I am sure that session was full of insight, and even audiences have a lot to take away. Uh, so, uh, in, as as uh, Rishikesh mentioned, that in case you have any uh, questions about today's session or uh, uh, about the general POC, please write us to at marketing at netmagicsolutions.com. And uh, with this, I thank you uh, very much to all of you to join this session and uh, have and making this insight insightful one. Thank you, speakers. Thank you, attendees. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time. Thank you.